Hi, this is Sonil Bharti and we are here at Spendaker Summit in San Diego and today we have with us Ethan Rogers, your staff software engineer at Armory. You wear a lot of hats. You're a TOC member at Spinnaker as well as you're also on Kubernetes SIG, which focuses on Spinnaker. So we're going to talk about a lot of things uh, related to Kubernetes and Spinnaker. So we'll be like crossing the bridges and we are having KubeCon also yeah. <laughs> in two days. And right we, can, we yeah. can see the venue from here. So it's going to be very interesting uh, discussion. But before we kind of get into all of that, I want to understand what is the role of CI CD in today's world as compared to in early days where the whole life cycle was 20 years or something like that? When it comes to like talking about CI and CD, um, the I like to think of it as just tools to like mitigate risk, right? The, when you talk about it, on the scale our systems are running today um, and the kind of availability and reliability, all of our services that we use on a daily basis, they need to have that. Um, you start thinking about, okay, how is my software built? How is it deployed? What are the practices that software engineers are embracing to keep risk low, but to innovate quickly? Um, and if, it's really interesting when you start to think about CI and CD together, because you can kind of draw a line between the two and say, like, you can very clearly see which one affects customers and which one doesn't, right? So on, at a certain level, CI is a low risk practice, right? If a build breaks in development, users don't generally see that. You might have some tests slip through, some bugs kind of not be caught by tests in CI, but overall, it's pretty low risk. Um, in my mind, where the rubber meets the road is software delivery. Um, it is the kind of most, um, the most customer facing development practice that we have. So when we deliver software, we really need to be able to do it quickly so we can innovate safely so that we can keep customers' expectations high and they keep continue to use our service. And all of that is in the effort of innovating faster, beating our competitors. So delivery, in my mind, is, is one of the most critical pieces of that puzzle. And so we need, like I said, we need tools to enable ourselves to do it safely, quickly, and reliably. And excellent. Thanks for explaining that. If you look at CI CD or CI or in CD, uh, Spinnaker is not the first one there. People have been doing, but most of that work with Jenkins, all that, it was more like patchwork. You know, you bring a lot of things together and, and try to make things work with a lot of scripts. How is Spinnaker changed the whole, you know, landscape for CI CD? And uh, how, how it's approaching it differently as compared to not only those solutions, but also some competing solutions. Spinnaker takes the whole idea of software delivery as it stands today and turns it on its head. So in the past, we've had tools like Jenkins and Travis and basically any other CI as YAML tool that you wanted. And you could, you could do CI and you could do CD. And the only reason that you could do that is because if you can write code that builds your software and deploys it, you can do anything you want, right? Those tools are glorified job runners. Now in, in this kind of like world of Kubernetes, containers are big. You can pretty much do exactly what you want. The challenge with that is writing scripts to do deployment. They're brittle. They need to change all the time. And in, co in companies like Netflix and Snapchat and all of these larger companies, um, what they've kind of found is that that just doesn't scale, right? The, you, you, the number of software engineers that you have that know cloud is so much smaller than the ones that you don't. And so teams kind of form and the, they have like infrastructure teams, SRE teams, operations teams that are building these pipelines for software engineers that they get to the point where they find that they, all, they can't push their scripts out, changes to their scripts, people can't adopt them. Um, and so that's where Spinnaker comes in. It kind of takes away this notion of I'm doing continuous deployment and delivery with scripting and I'm doing it now with this like best practice way of doing it. So instead of writing, you know, hundreds of lines of bash to rotate server groups in like an auto scale group or replica set in Kubernetes, now Spinnaker is handling that for you and all you don't really have to worry about what that looks like, how those 
like the different mechanisms that make that happen, right? You don't have 30 teams doing a blue-green slightly differently, and some teams are more successful than others. You have everyone on the same playing field. Um, and that, to kind of tie it back to innovation, if you have teams following patterns and you have teams that are not having to think about all that complexity, they can innovate faster because they're spending that time thinking about innovating instead of how do I configure my EC2 instance to run this application. Since you also sit on Kubernetes SIG, let's discuss about what role does Spinnaker plays in the Kubernetes world or Kubernetes plays in the Spinnaker world? The role that Spinnaker kind of plays in the, in the Kubernetes world is um, we, what we've seen, um, and I'm like being a part of Armory, we kind of we work with a lot of different customers who are at different parts of their journey, right? We have our company has kind of this five stage um, plan to cloud adoption, right? And stage one is I'm not in the cloud, I'm in data centers, mutably deploying to VMs, and then stage five is Netflix, right? And there's it's a scale between there, um, and what we find that is that a lot of um, people are they're adopting Kubernetes. Kubernetes is this rocket ship that people are trying to get on board. And what they've done is they've they've had these experiences with continuous deployment in the past, and they've come to those same conclusions that what they're doing doesn't scale. So they're adopting Kubernetes, and they're also looking for something to help them deploy to Kubernetes. And that's where they're seeing Spinnaker come into play. So Kubernetes is almost this like headless thing. You have a command line to say what's going on, but you don't really, as a software engineer, maybe as an operator you have a good view of it, but as a software engineer, you typically don't. You might have an ops team go, hey, we're gonna use this new Kubernetes thing. Here's this command line tool. If something goes wrong, kube control, get whatever, and, it's, and you see it. Um, but Spinnaker really kind of helps our, helps teams adopting Kubernetes start to learn it, start to learn what their application landscapes look like, um, what the, like how they're actually deployed. So when you think about the Spinnaker in the context of Kubernetes, it's kind of like a, it's an enabler, right? It, it helps enable that Kubernetes adoption. Um, I'll be the first to tell you it's not perfect yet, right? It's not, um, it, it's, it's not like this out of the box perfect experience from right off the bat, but it is better than some other tools where you're having to, not only do you have to learn Spinnaker or Kubernetes, but you also have to learn um, how do I make a pipeline in this, uh, in this new world? How do I, what are the different um, resources that I can create, right? Um, so Spinnaker is like a very straightforward kind of thing. You can get to that point where you're doing in infrastructure as code and you're doing pipelines as code. and um, That's certainly something Spinnaker enables, but for, for a, I want to adopt Kubernetes and I want to get off the ground, it's a really great starting point. A lot of your customers, not either your customers or the committee members, some are, you know, as you said, they're different phases of their journey. Some may already be using Kubernetes. Some may already be using Spinnaker and trying to use Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you should use this first and move to this second or there's no a lot of people will come to Kubernetes and Spinnaker at the same time. You'll also have people that are coming to Spinnaker after having used it to deploy to EC2. Um, you also have people who are coming to Spinnaker after you know running on Kubernetes and finding that just using things like Helm and Kube Control running on Jenkins isn't scaling, right? Um, and so I think from what I've seen, if you're trying to adopt Spinnaker, and Kubernetes at the same time, it's gonna be a really tough journey, right? Adopting Kubernetes in general is a pretty tough journey if you're not like a super cloud-oriented team. Um, if you're an ops team trying to push Kubernetes into the rest of the organization, it can be a, a bit of a challenge. If you're a software developer who's having to learn that, it can be a challenge because now you have to write your applications and learn this new thing called Kubernetes. Um, but what we've what we've found works best is you kind of adopt one and then the other, um, but what we like our ideal goal is like Spinnaker is the thing that helps you adopt, so you can adopt both at the same time, um, and that's something that we're like through the Kubernetes SIG we're like trying to draw people in so that we can get that feedback where, you know, 
we have this mix. What, what our ideal state is we have this mix of power users and new users. And we can learn, okay, how do we take the practices and the things that power users are doing and make those consumable and adoptable by the new users who are trying to, to start learning Kubernetes so that we can encourage safe, scalable, um, high-tech, I guess, deployments that you're seeing with companies like Google and Netflix. Do you also sit on uh, Kubernetes SIG, which is for Spinnaker. What is the role of the SIG uh, in, in context of Spinnaker? Our goal is to make Kubernetes integration within Spinnaker the best it can be. Right? It's a pretty broad charter, but that's, that's what we want. So I am uh, I serve as a co-lead on that SIG with Eric Zamani and Maggie Netterville from Google, um, and the three of us are responsible for you know interacting with all of the users who are using Kubernetes um, through Slack. Um, sometimes we'll go and we'll have face-to-face -face meetings with these customers. Um, this is actually really a great event for us because we get to see and meet a lot of people that we've talked to online for you know for a year or two or only talk to on GitHub. Um, and then like we we just recently started doing like an ish issue triage process where it gives us a really good view of what kind of problems customers are facing. Um, it's still that's still something about our community that we're really building is like encouraging people, giving people a place to give us feedback so that we can make it better for them. Um, and the SIGs play a really big role in that. It gives the community like an open space to come uh, talk, share what they're doing, share how they're doing certain things, but also learning from other people. Um, one of my favorite things that we do is we call it open discussion at the end of every meeting. We might have an agenda that lasts 15 minutes and we'll use up 40 the rest of the hour talking about Kubernetes, people asking questions, people learning from each other, um, which is a really cool experience. So the SIG is really just like a, a community-focused space where we can bring people across different companies to learn and teach each other. Now let's talk about Armory a bit. Okay. From, from Spinnaker's point of view, in the context of Spinnaker, tell us what Armory does. Yeah, so we are a, um, we're a, a Spinnaker distribution for the enterprise. Um, so open source Spinnaker is kind of like an iceberg. Well, Spinnaker in general is kind of like an iceberg. Um, the open source part is actually such a small subset of what, what Spinnaker looks like at Netflix and larger organizations um, because of how extendable it is. So what we've found is that smaller organizations can adopt it as is, but larger ones need integrations into all of their big systems, all of the internal tooling that they have, right? The, maybe even the continuous delivery software that they're trying to replace with Spinnaker. Um, and so what our aim is to supply a Spinnaker distribution um, that can meet those needs, that can meet those um, requirements that large orgs have. Um, so they have things like compliance and they have things like auditing and um, security and stuff that the open source part of Spinnaker doesn't have um, and that you know larger or smaller organizations might not care about. So we're, that's our that's our goal is to to be Spinnaker for the enterprise. In today's world, we cannot really talk about one year from now. Forget about ten years. How do you see the landscape for Spinnaker and Kubernetes uh, changing in the next let's say six months, based on the roadmap that you have seen for Spinnaker and Kubernetes? Um, so I actually think that what we'll see is we'll start to see some of these systems fade into the background. Um, Kubernetes is abstracting a lot of the really common operational patterns that people were using with virtual machines over time. Um, and I don't, I don't think that Kubernetes is kind of the last thing that we'll ever see, right? It, it's software, it's technology, something is always going to change. Um, so I think what we'll start seeing is things built on top of Kubernetes and even on top of Spinnaker that abstracts it such that it, it fades into the background. Um, and these platforms might take on a life of their own. Um, they might turn into something 10 years from now or a year from now that they weren't a year ago or 10 years ago. Um, and so, you know, as these systems become more platformable, I guess is a, a good way to say that, you can build things on top of it. We'll, we actually will start seeing less and less of it in front of our faces. Um, but we'll, we'll also still keep having Spinnaker Summits and KubeCons because it's a really great time to, to join with the rest of the community and, and learn from each other.
awesome. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. That. Thanks, Ethan, for talking to us today. And as you know, as you rightly said, you know, uh, maybe we'll be seeing each other again soon to to get update on what's next going on in the Spinnaker and Kubernetes world. Thank awesome. you. Thanks for having me.